All right, we're going to start a minute early. Roll call. Mr. Alboni? Yes. Mr. Dickey? Yes. Mr. Dutt? Yes. Mrs. Scouten? Yes. Mr. White? And we want to welcome our visitors tonight. Could you lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands. friends from Buckeye Valley East. Um, we're thrilled to see all of these faces here, especially the familiar ones, so thank you. Um, and they did a very wonderful concert back in March with a lot of um, music about America. And so we're going to sing a song for you called Fifty Nifty United States. <laughs> <laughs> Do I need a motion to approve the agenda? 
I move the Buckeye Valley Board of Education, Board of Education approve the attached uh, agenda. I second. Roll call. Michelle Moody? Yes. Mr. Hickey? Yes. Mr. Stutt? Yes. Mrs. Scott? Yes. All right. I need a motion to approve the minutes of four meetings, March 12th, 16th, 8th, and <coughs> April 12th. I move that the Buckeye Valley Board of Education approve the attached minutes upon the recommendation of the treasurer. Second that motion. There were a couple changes, just adding the adjournment motions for those all made. Yes, sir. Roll call. Michelle Booney? Yes. Mr. Jakey? Yes. Mrs. Dunn? Yes. Mrs. Scouted? Yes. Thank you. District update. Ready? We're going to. Well, first off, that East uh, third grade performance was awesome, and we'll keep with the East theme. We'll go ahead and do a, a quick student success update, and it's uh, East is our update this week. So, Mr. Thomas, please take away. Thank you. My pleasure. Please do. Hello. All right. Hey, appreciate everybody coming out tonight. A lot of staff members are here. It's great to see everybody in the community come out and, and support the school district. Um, I'm going to start off with Mrs. Scott. Mrs. Scott, you have been here for a couple of years here to talk a little bit about East Elementary School. We got a lot of good things going on there. Um, I know sometimes it doesn't get the shine that it deserves, um, but we're working extremely hard and everybody's putting in their due and it, it is an exciting time at East. So we'll start with our presentation. Uh, one thing we talk about at East all the time is we are responsible, we are respectful, and we are safe. So anytime a student comes in there, we're having a conversation with them, we're always reinforcing what it means to be a Buckeye Valley East student. And some of those are being responsible, respectful, and safe at all times. All right, so we have a little fun fact about some of the staff members that we have. Um, we have multiple staff members who are Buckeye Valley alums, which is nice to have in the building because that shows that they care. We're trying to uh, create a culture um, where people want to come back, people want to be involved in the community. Um, we have a lot of staff members that have over 20 years of service to Buckeye Valley East. And that's something special. You know, you want to have staff that are always around. Um, we keep talking, you know, we want to build a culture. Culture is so important. Well, you can't have people coming and going, right? You want people that want to be here, that want to be a part of this community. Um, and the last one, um, we have even more, our, our teachers, our kids are coming to Buckeye Valley. And that says something, you know, our, our, our staff isn't sending kids elsewhere. You know, we want them here in the building because they believe and trust what's going on at Buckeye Valley East. Hey, our PTO has been great to us this year. Um, anytime we ask them for anything, Kayla Baker, Ashley Baker do a great job of supporting uh, us as the teachers. Um, we had a goal of $5,000 to raise for the flower sale and actually we raised over 7,000, uh, so that's huge. Um, they also have been great with PTO giving us money for uh, instructional reimbursement, almost $9,000, all right? So they're really helping us out giving us what we need. So we want a special thanks to our PTO. We can give them a round of applause. <laughs> we also have our, our PTO is sponsoring a carnival. That will be this Friday. So I know nobody has plans on Friday. It's supposed to get the weather. It's supposed to be a little nicer. So everybody that's here better be at the carnival donating their time and money. Um, so again, it's a great cause. Uh, we'd like to see everybody there. Uh, so this is talk about making connections. You know, we, we started with COVID. It kind of put a damper on everything of being able to be involved. Um, we've had the middle school and the high school come over to our building and, and sing. And it's great to see some of the kids that come up and see their brothers and sisters taking part of it. And that's something we've missed, right? We, we want kids to be involved and see what it's like, something to look forward to. You know, when you're younger, you want to see, oh, uh, that's what I want to be when I get older. I want to be like my brother and sister and get the chance to go sing in front of the kids. And, and that was very special to see. Um, we've had the band concert as well. Uh, we had 15 students come over and talk to our fifth graders about expectations. And they were also able to read to our second and third graders. And, and one thing that was really cool, um, the third graders and second graders were so excited to have the kids read to them. But I also had a couple of high school kids reach out to me afterwards and say, hey, tell me, tell me what it takes to be a teacher. And, and it kind of worked in reverse. You know, you think the young kids are going to be super excited. You know, these older kids are coming to talk to me. Well, you know, two kids messaged me inspired that they want to go into teaching from that experience. And so that really hit home, and I was really proud of them um, for having that feeling. So this is our chart. We want to talk a little bit about growth. Um, we know with COVID, there's been a lot of changes within the district. 
Uh, so the blue is where some behavior referrals that were happening last year at Buckeye Valley East. Um, and I know it's a different time with COVID, everything was changed a little bit, um, but we've made tremendous improvements. We, should, we have a, a behavioral unit now with Hannah Vieta, who does an amazing job. <laughs> and with that, we've seen the, the language, the disrespect, the defiance, the disruption, and the chronic behaviors have really improved. And is it perfect? No, it's never going to be perfect. But as long as we're making progress, that's all that matters. And, and we're seeing progress every day. The teachers are working extremely, extremely hard. We have such a caring staff, and, and, and they bust their tail every day. And I've never been around a staff that cares more about the kids than our, our teachers do at Buckeye Valley East. Uh, so we've talked about some community outreach programs. It, it's so important that we want to get involved in the community as much as possible. Um, we set up a student ambassadors club. Um, they called local businesses and, and raised money, got donations. And this was all students doing this. And every student went home with a bag full of goodies for Christmas. And that's something special because you never know who's, who, what people don't have. Um, and that was all student-based. And the PTO did a great job, again, of supporting us and providing us with these nice uh, yellow bags, which you see the kids bring in uh, throughout the school year. So it's pretty awesome. Uh, and this is more uh, community-based. Um, so this is something for me personally. Um, I've done a basketball camp at Buckeye Valley uh, since I played in Europe. Um, and it's been interesting because even though I'm from Ashley, there's only about seven kids a year that would come uh, participate in the camp. This year so far, we have over 35 kids signed up that go to Buckeye Valley. So that's showing kids want to be involved. They, they want to be active in what, what's going on in the community. Uh, we're also doing a golf uh, golf outing, and uh, our student, our school liaison, has done an amazing job of helping get sponsors at Abbey Bales. Uh, well, we have over we have over 40 sponsors that have been donating to the golf outing, and we have 32 teams, which is maxed out at Mill Creek. I, mean, I talked to Nick Curtis about getting some more teams, but he said we can't. So if you see him, give him a hard time. Um, but all that's going to get, oh, 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 oh. One more? Yeah. So all of that money will be raised, will go back into the Buckeye Valley East community, and it's for outreach programs, being able to give kids an opportunity. Experience is something that is so important, you know. You can give money and this and that, but time and experience is something that, that all kids may not get. Um, so we're hoping to bring a lot of that back with mentoring programs and different things like that. Um, and all of these here are what uh, Mrs. Bales has done a great job working with so many different um, organizations and trying to bring stuff to help support our families at East. And she's done a really great job, and, and it's only going to continue to grow. So looking ahead, you know, we're talking about constantly reaching out, always giving back to our community, having the kids participate in those outreach programs. Uh, 4-H, Boy Scouts, we talked to the local library about being involved, um, and, and that's very important. We've had so many new staff members at Well at East, and, and, and they're given everything that they have. And it, it's so nice to see when you come into the school every single day, you know, your, your co-workers are smiling, they're excited, they're excited to see the kids, and it makes us such a great environment. And, and we're trending in the right direction, and I know our new principal is here for next year, um, so we're excited to have her. And Mr. Thompson has done a great job of taking us, you know, one step, and we're excited because we know she's going to take us further, and we're going to continue to be successful. And here we have a video that was put together by all of our staff, uh, Mrs. Dury. So we can play this video, and we appreciate your time. I love Buckeye Valley East because there's so many nice people. I love Buckeye Valley East because all the teachers here are very nice and friendly and they have a good sense of humor. <laughs> We love coming to Buckeye Valley East because we get to see our teachers and our friends. And we learn from them. I love going to Buckeye Valley East because the staff is really nice and welcome.
I love Buckeye Valley just because I learn a lot. I love Buckeye Valley East because there's a lot of kind teachers. I like Buckeye Valley East because of all the fun activities. I like Buckeye Valley East because of all the fun people here. I love Buckeye Valley because of my teachers and friends. I love Buckeye Valley because of the love and support. I like Buckeye Valley East because they're helpful when you learn new things and it's fun. Buckeye Valley East because there are amazing teachers and it's so fun. I love coming to Buckeye Valley East because it's a good spot just to read a book and learn. Staff, thank you. That is way better than anything you're going to hear from me uh, today. But, uh, thank you. I'm glad to see some awesome things are happening uh, over at, at East Elementary. So. Can I say something here? Please. I would like to just make a comment. Um, Scott Thomas is a big part of that success as well. I know he doesn't like to toot his own horn, but uh, the Buckeye Valley Youth Program hasn't had East teams in 15 years. And this year we've had two. So. I've never known Scott to have a problem tuning his own head. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys. Uh, you're welcome to stay, um, but I would understand if you, you guys need to get after your presentation. But before I close the, the district update, just want to let um, the board know that we did have our first um, elementary spacing committee meeting last week, um, April 14th, and that was uh, led by Mrs. Scouten, and I, uh, I assist her on that. Biggest focus of that meeting was really to, to discuss the issue um, did a lot about why we are where we are. Um, we did that for quite a while, but then moved on to try to figure out ways to address that problem. Um, and right now that committee, we're gonna meet again on May 17th, but hopefully we'll have an exhaustive list of potential solutions that we as a committee can begin narrowing down for presentation to the board and, and to the greater community so that hopefully we can we can address that, that space of concern. But we are on it and uh, we are 
we are meeting to, to work on that. So that is it for the, the district update. Thank you. All right. We're on to public participation. We have two items that two comments related to something on the agenda. We have another a number of comments at the end. And I'm new to the gavel, but you'll hear like, can you like 30 seconds after two and a half minutes, you'll get a, a notice. And then after three minutes, I'll let you finish your sentence or thought I'll be listening very closely to you. And then I'll, when the gavel hits, the time is up just to be respectful of everybody. So we have, um, for agenda items, we have Kelly Willis. Uh, thank you, and I appreciate you giving me this time. My name is Kelly Willis. We've lived in the village of Ostrander since December 2006. We have two children in Buckeye Valley Local School System, currently in sixth and seventh grade. My son witnessed a bullying incident on their bus this school year and reported it to the bus driver. An eighth grader yelled derogatory racial slurs at a sixth grader who had just moved to our district. My daughter just recently told me of an incident in her career exploration class. She had permission to draw on the board and drew a character that looks similar to a fox, excuse me, from a video game that she likes. Another student called her a furry and proceeded to say all furries should die. Again, my child followed protocol by completing a harassment bullying incident form that goes to both the teacher and principal. She didn't tell me about the incident, nor was I notified by the school when it happened. From what I learned from my daughter later, this was not a first time offense by the other student. The student apparently brags about being suspended for her bad behavior. My husband and I are lucky that our children are comfortable talking to us and they share most things when they experience them at school in real time. But in my daughter's situation, she didn't tell me until a few weeks after the fact. I would think that if a student files an official report, the family should be notified so that they can speak with their children to assure they are socially and emotionally okay with how things were handled and determined if following up with the school is necessary. There is supposed to be an accurate dashboard to keep families informed of such incidents in our district. If our children follow protocol and report incidents, they witness or are victims of, why are we as parents not notified? Our district's anti-bullying policies haven't been updated since 2017. The dashboard on the district's website also hasn't been updated since 2017. Documents and information referenced on the site frequently have incorrect citations and are paraphrased or not linked to the sources. They are like puzzle pieces from different sites and government documents. This should be reevaluated and all of information brought up to date to address the current issues we are facing. We cannot continue to dismiss these incidents. We have witnessed high school students being so brazen to attend these BOE meetings and exhibit name calling and derogatory gestures in the back of the room, surrounded by parents, other students, and all of you. We all need to be vigilant, vocal, and unwavering in following our district guidelines and showing zero tolerance for these behaviors. Thank you, Ms. Willis. Um, next would be Ms. Timmons. She's not here. Thank you for ready, Clemmy. Okay, great. Thank you for accepting my comment. My apologies, I'm unable to attend in person. I had childcare issues. I wanted to raise my continued concerns with board members spreading misinformation throughout the community. I also wish to speak on the non-discrimination policy. We've heard by now the events that transpired over Jason Tharp's visit. My concern in the events that transpired are abuse of power and suspected intimidation, um, which includes book banning, the homophobia present within the school board, the fact that this is a public educational institution where critical thinking and validation of facts are being taught within these walls. 
Um, I'm hoping today that we as a community receive an apology from the board members involved in the situation. I would like to further address the issues of misinformation being spread through this community. The Unicorn Book has nothing to do with the LGBTQ community as refuted by the author. The Centero group came in and refuted accusations that are addressed in a YouTube video that's still being shown on a board member's website. It concerns me the school board members using their power within the community to continually project misinformation for the purpose of their values and beliefs. You may not agree with certain things, but that does not mean they are wrong. Respect goes both ways. And what is in trans what is transpiring is not respect nor kindness, it is fear and propaganda. Um, perpetuating misinformation, catering to a select group of individuals and continually pushing aside the federal rights of others is causing further harm to our community. I plead to the school board to stop the hate within themselves and show respect for differences of opinions and work towards bettering this community to accept others for who they are. Otherwise, you're a part of the bullying issue we have today. I want to express concerns regarding the practice of this current school board. No vote was made on whether the fifth grade students were to move to the middle school. Instead, a board member posted a comment on a Facebook notifying parents this move would no longer take place. The use of pronouns was addressed in March, but no resolution was made, although many members of our community and student body came to support the use of pronouns within our district. Administrative matters are being handled at the school board level where they don't belong. Uh, the non-discrimination policy no longer includes harassment as a form of discrimination. Right. Have an anti-harassment policy too. All right, financial report. I need a motion to approve the attached financial report. I move the Buckeye Valley Board of Education approve the attached financial report at the recommendation of the treasurer. I second. Could you explain it? Sure. Um, again, this is our monthly reconciliation for the month of March. Again, we'll see that first page is the um, <clears throat> is a check registry for the month. Second document is re the revenue ledger ledger for the month. And the third document is the actual bank reconciliation that I perform every month. Um, and then also the graphs are showing budget versus actual by month. Um, and then the last page of that report is a monthly breakdown of cash, revenue, and expenditure for that month. All in order. In the month of May, the board will approve the five-year forecast. I will presume <coughs> the board will approve the five-year forecast. And you got property taxes. Settlement did come in in March. Um, like Six point three million. Thank you, community. Roll call. Any questions? I'm sorry. Roll call. Mr. Labuni. Yes. Mr. Dickey. Yes. Mrs. Dutt. Yes. Skelton. Yes. I need a motion to approve. We're on a new business. I need a motion to approve the consent items. Which are 
five one to five eleven. Um. So I have a question about the supplementals. We um we oh, motion sorry. and second okay. and then we ask questions. I got you. Keep me in check. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> I move the Buckeye Valley Board of Education approve, cons uh, approve consent items 5.1 through 5.11. And I need a second. Second. Thank you. So new business this month, nothing too um, crazy. We have a bus driver shuttle. That's just a, um, a new shuttle we had to, to add due to some students going to a, a different placement. Um, certified employment these are not new positions these are transfers within the district that that we've made um, we'll be posting the, the final spots here once all the dominoes have um, fallen um, the next one the, the classified is the same thing we had a, a transfer from one of our custodians over to east elementary um, administrative employment we have our new east principal and high school principal miss uh Leanne Childers, and then Zach Riggs, our, our new high school principal here, to uh, be approved. Um, we're excited to have them. Our supplementals, these are um, coachy, coaches, athletic director. Um, there's a change in one of our track coaches. Um, April, did you have a question on? I just, so the athletic director, mm -hmm. Is that that's at the middle school only? That, that's at the middle school only. There, there's three supplementals by season, so this is the third um, season of that. So. Okay, so we're doing them by season versus, I know in the past it was we had somebody in charge of the athletics. Um, we've done the, the supplementals this way for three or four years, I think, and then we, we've had kind of a, Mr. Smith was globally over it, but we still had a, a game manager there that was, was helping out. Um, this is a, a supplemental, so it's BBTA, um, have first rights to it, so that's why we does it work better that way than it did before? I just. It's a supplemental we have, um, and it's a supplemental that one of our, our teachers are filling. So it's it's working well. Yes, we can okay. revisit how, how we've done it. Um, I'm just curious because with that pay, I'm surprised we get anybody to do it, one. And two, um, I just feel like the consistency, the culture that we're trying to build, um, with somebody constantly coming in. We've been lucky that it's the been the same person, all three supplementals, so that okay. we have been been lucky with that. Okay. But that's something we can certainly discuss more. I just know that it was different, and I was just curious to why we went this way, and if it is being beneficial, or if we need to look at different options, that's all. So. We can, we can, can I just say it's a little hard to hear, and I'm up close, just to, oh. so I just want to throw that out there. Sorry. <laughs> no, thanks. <laughs> Resignations. This was a, a mentor. It looked like she took another supplemental prior, so I'm guessing that's where that is. The contract renewals for administrators. That's these are just the, the cycle. These are the folks that were up for contract this year, and this is their their renewals. Um, 5.9 is um, a foreign exchange student program that we uh, need to approve so if we can get that particular student in our our building next year. 510 is our meta contract. That's a consortium to provide services to us, including some of our our technology, and then 5.11 is the uh, anti-discrimination policy second reading, um, which we, we did the first reading last meeting, um, and this is per OSBA recommendations. Any other questions for me? Deb, I'm sorry I didn't ask you before, but that bus yes. shuttle is, oh, there it is. Sorry, no, it got, wasn't showing up before. Some kids with new placement, we got to transport them and uh, this driver's one. Sure Do we have, is it our shuttle? Or? It is, it's our driver, our bus. Oh, okay, okay. They ride it in the morning on normal route and then after the route they'll shuttle them over to their, their location. And we're approving a new organization to oversee the exchange this students. This is just an additional organization. An additional, so a new organization. Yes. New to us, but correct. they're accredited. That's correct. Any other questions? No. Okay. 
Roll call. Michelle Bunny? Yes. Mr. Tiki? Yes. Mrs. Beth? Yes. Mrs. Scouted? Yes. Discussion items? We have no discussion items. Public participation? So our policy allows for 15 minutes at the beginning and 15 at the end for non-agenda items. We have 18 public participation cards for this evening. And it will go over the 15 minutes allotted. So we have some options. We can keep to our policy and allow 15 minutes, which would allow approximately five speakers. We can allow, you know, up, up to 30 minutes um, total, which would knock off some, or we can allow uh, all speakers. It's really up to us to decide. This is our meeting. We have business to conduct afterwards, an executive session about the superintendent search. So, um, I don't. I mean, this is about um, non agenda. Hopefully, um, we're not rehashing. I mean, I guess the superintendent search is super important, and I feel like that should be number one priority. So I don't want to be here till midnight. No. <laughs> but um, that's just my take. I mean, maybe we cut everybody down to two minutes. I don't know. Or what about not read the emails? You guys can read those on your own time. I'll have to say that. Sorry. <laughs> um, or just have the people that are here speak. I mean, how many emails do we have? Four. Okay. I think up until now we haven't cut people off, um, but the rule's supposed to be that as of noon, that's the cutoff. <coughs> so maybe going forward, anyone afternoon, we let them know that they're past the cutoff, and that'll limit it for next time. But I know a lot of these came in afternoon. Yeah, we got like ten in the last couple hours. So, so since we we haven't stopped them before, I, I don't see how you know they took the time to come out here. We're going to stop them. I would say, though, going forward, that noon is to cut off, and we should stay with it. Or we'd stay with our policy, 15 minutes. Or we've allowed, you know, 30, but we've since the fall, time. we've been allowing, we've been suspending our policy. I mean, let's just get them rolling. Okay. Do the emails last, but the people that are I here would, go first. Um, if we decide we want to read the emails, we can, or we could just. I we, them we can time. read them. They're on the comment. I would say that for the sake of time and us getting to our important business. Yep. I mean, I want everybody in the community has a voice and should be respected. Um, but the ones that are read, I'd like to not do that, um, just to save some time. So I do need a motion to suspend our policy to allow everybody but the the ones that were written in. We'll make a motion to suspend our policy for this meeting only mm -hmm. and to uh, allow the emails for us to read on, read on, our, on own. our own time. Second that motion. We need to vote. Um, Mrs. Dutt? Yes. Mr. L. No. Mr. Dickey? Yes. And Mrs. Scavin? Yes. But moving forward, we will be adhering to the if the comment is not submitted to the treasurer by 12 o'clock the day of the meeting, it will be excluded from being read at the meeting. We could stick to our policy too. But I yeah. mean, that's what our policy is, right? No, it just says 15 and 15. Okay. We're also saying that if you're here live, it's more important than if you're doing it through emails, what we just did. So if someone can't get a ride here, or isn't able to drive here, we're saying they're not as important as other people. No, I'm just trying to adhere to a time. It's for time's sake is what I think. And we already voted on it. So. We already voted, yeah. All right, thank you. Our, uh, uh, Stephanie Mamke. Uh, 
Hello, good evening. Hope everyone is doing well. Can you, is the mic on? I don't know. <laughs> is that better? Is that better? Yes. yes. Okay. All right. So my name is Steph Mamby. I am a fourth grader who happens to be homeschooled this year. So I have a unique situation in that we plan on putting him back in BB for next year for fifth grade. So I'm a parent of a future fifth grader. And <coughs> I'm really excited about it actually because he'll be going back to West and we have incredible teachers there. So that wasn't the problem. But when a few weeks ago I went to the school with my son and we did a tour, and there were a few things I thought were really concerning. Um, that as a parent of a future fifth grader, I was hoping you guys could actually answer for me. It's no secret that we have some overcrowding issues at the school and that there have been some um, very unique attempts to help create space for all of our teachers. But one of the things I noticed when we were on that visit was that there was a fourth grade classroom that had no windows. It used to be a space that served as a library. And I know last minute, it was turned into a core classroom. Um, that worries me. It also worries me, well, I guess what I really want to know is how do you plan to, to address those issues? How do you plan on addressing overcrowding? We have another classroom. If you look on our website, Buckeye Valley says we are down two classrooms. One of the other classrooms that is currently being used has, I believe, 14 students in it, and there's absolutely no space for those kids to have their items. Their stuff sits in milk crates in the hallway. So we have a teacher who is inside of his, his little office space is in a closet. Like there's just no space. So I'm very concerned as a parent how you're gonna address the overcrowding issue, um, what your plan is for that, what are you guys going to do for the fifth grade, what classrooms are you planning on putting them in, how will you pay for additional support for those students, and when do you plan on letting everyone know? The changes that were implemented at the school last year happened the week before school started. That wasn't enough time at all to get community input on it. So my personal opinion is, you know, figure this out and make it soon. Um, so I guess, okay, question number one is what is your plan to fix that, to deal with the overcrowding issue? Question number two, I saw the presentation that Mr. Berlicky put together in 2021 and you made some great pros and cons. There were like nine options offered um, in order to <coughs> help with our class sizes. And 30 seconds. Thank you. And I guess what I want to know is why did you decide to move the kids? What was that overall plan? We have 12 classes at the middle school currently available. And it seems like there's not going to be any cost whatsoever for us to move those kids to the middle school. So why are we keeping them at the elementary school? That to me was something I also um, couldn't make sense of. And last but not least, I'm very curious as the cost differences between keeping the kids at the elementary school and then moving them to the middle school. All of that look like. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Phil Berkey. Um, good evening. My name is Phil Berkey. My wife and I live just on your right. Hear me all right? All right. Yeah. Is that better? Yeah. All right. Uh, before I get started, teachers, thanks for being here. We had another had this many teachers here before, so I'm glad you're here because you're going to help my point out a lot, so appreciate it. Um, I come here tonight to speak the truth, and I speak for the majority. We are fighting many distractions in our school as of late. Many people are approaching this with anger, hate, fear, assumptions, and very quick judgments on others. This goes... We all do it. Some do it more than, than others. So if you're hiding in a corner, you don't think it's you. It's every one of you, including me. Um, many, almost all of these distractions are expressed through social media with the me first agenda at hand. Social media is the most crippling problem we have here in our society, in our school district. Um, we are, the, we are the source of our problems. We point fingers, we blame others, we speak out of turn, we speak out of predetermined time restraints, but yet we live as if we are not accountable for these actions. We are our own problem. 
We complain to the board. We assume things about anything. We don't get our way. And then we restart the problem. Some of us talk louder and longer to be heard. We were given two ears and one mouth. Use them appropriately. As a school and community, we need to simplify to be successful, starting with the education process. Look at the Buckeye Valley mission statement. Nowhere in it is the word education. There are a growing list of distractions every day in our school, and the list continues to seem to be growing. This is for the educators. You know that you have a limited amount of time to educate our youth. There's only so much time in the day to educate our youth. Many of these distractions are not education, but thoughts, feelings, and ideologies. It is the responsibility of parents and guardians to form and grow the last three items I mentioned. Stop taking away your education from all children. Thank you. Thank you. Andrew Keener. Hi, uh, I'm Andrew Keener. Um, my wife Carrie and I had two kids in Buckeye Valley since kindergarten. Um, Ella graduated last year, and our younger kid, Seven, is a junior right now. Um, and I'm here to speak today um, because public under education is under attack. And uh, I'm asking the board and everyone in this room to defend it. Um, there's a lot of uh, sort of vicious political line going on right now in the U.S. that's kind of standard. Um, but right now it's being aimed at the schools. Uh, just as an example, what's going on in Florida right now is just nuts. Um, you know, these ridiculous accusations about groomers and pedophiles and all this nonsense. And people are getting death threats, and it's getting so bad they're screwing up their legislative process. Um, and what alarmed me is that it's the most sort of cynical and violent type of political line because it's using people with real concern for their kids as a weapon. Uh, we're fortunate that that kind of thing has not yet uh, started to gain traction here in Ohio. Um, sort of Midwestern practicality seems to be holding out against the hysteria so far, but uh, I'm asking everyone here to, to work to make sure that kind of thing does not take root. We need to keep things rational here in Ohio. Because here's the thing. Um, public schooling is the absolute backbone of democracy. Uh, Americans invented it. I don't know if everyone knows that, but we did. And we invented it because this is the first place on earth where a common person's education matters. Um, attacks on our public education system are direct assaults on sort of the basic idea of the United States. And it's, it's easy to forget that and everything else that we're dealing with right now. Um, so I'm, asking, you know, I'm here to remind you about it and to ask you to remind each other about it all the time. You know, this is critical to how this country works. And uh, that brings me to House Bill 290, the backpack bill. Um, on its surface, it's nothing like the nonsense that's going on in Florida, right? No one here is throwing around bizarre accusations. Um, but even if that bill's heart isn't in the same place, um, its results are going to take us down that same road. It's another example of this sort of generation-long attempt to bleed the public school into death with a thousand cuts. You know, somehow, there's this endless supply of money always available to push these schemes to convince us to just throw up our hands and give up and outsource the basic responsibility of educating our children to private businesses and to hold our heads in the sand and to ignore the serious issues that we're supposed to be fixing together. So that's the last thing I'm asking tonight. Yeah. Last thing I'm asking tonight is that everyone here, including the members of this board, you guys who earned the responsibility to defend our schools, do it. Work to stop the bleeding. We can fix these problems. We do it all the time. Life in America today is better than it's ever been for more people in more ways. But we all need a good education to recognize that truth. And that's why we need to put an end to the attempts to undermine our schools. Thank you. Thanks. Anna Cunningham. Thank you. 
Thank you. Um, families and board members in the entire Buckeye Valley community have asked who was responsible for the debacle with Jason Darf's visit. Dr. Prolick, you did send an email to the district, but it didn't give additional info, info on who was involved and alluded to some parental concerns. A public records request, however, was made and some of the answers uh, were identified. Specifically, two board members, Tom Alabuni and Donald Dickey, acting in board capacity, utilizing their district emails, seem to have played a role in leading the chaos. I want to make it clear that the other three board members were not at all involved in these email discussions. On Tuesday night, board member Tom Alabuni used a district email to send this message to Superintendent Froelich and fellow elected official Donald Dickey. The email states, we are telling our kids that being gay is okay. Elementary school, my second grader, and wear clothes to create a rainbow? What the devil? Are we out of our minds? Get ready to talk lawsuits. This is not okay. To which Dr. Froelich said, I have no idea what you're talking about. Can you please explain? So it appears that the initial complaint, at least to Dr. Froelich, was actually from a Buckeye Valley board member, Tom Alabuni. Board member Donald Dickey used his district email the following morning to continue the conversation. Jeremy, I think it would be in the best interest of the district to cancel Jason, who is pushing LGBTQ ideas. These emails illustrate and confirm what we all knew. It was never about the book. Individuals who never read the book and a disgraceful display of ignorance steeped in anti-LGBTQ rhetoric abuse their elected positions to push personal agendas and political agendas that have no place in a public school system. This has caused enormous embarrassment to the district. As we all know, national and international news has been covering this a lot. And Buffalo Valley is being seen as a community that believes unicorns are a part of a plan to recruit kids to be gay. And being gay is okay. I want to make sure our BB youth, and particularly our LGBTQ youth, know that being gay is okay. But what is not okay is this. District-sanctioned LGBTQ rhetoric that contradicts our caring culture pillar and board members overreaching their bounds and acting as extensions of teachers and administrators, you continue to cause a divisive and exclusionary culture, encouraging bullying, not just for the LGBT kids, but for many of our baby students who are unicorns in their own way, conservative kids, Christian kids, they are being bullied too. 30 seconds. The role of the board is to be a policy-making body and not manage the day-to-day -day operation. This is a public school district. LGBTQ rights are protected under federal law. You, public officials cannot disregard the U.S. Constitution's mandate regarding religious neutrality. So let's not worry about word unicorns. Let's worry about overcrowding, underpaid teachers. Let's not walk this line, dangerous line with lawsuits, Title IX violations, and violations of federal law. Let's do better. Do I hear from? My name is Diane Hickman. Thank you for the time uh, to speak to you this evening. I and my husband, Frank, are residents of the school district here. I believe what I have to say to you this evening reflects also the majority of our community. We expect much of our teachers, administrators, and each of you. We trust you to shine a light on the work of our school district. We expect you to fix those things that do not strengthen our curriculum or the learning environment in our schools. We must all be laser focused on the mission of preparing our students to take their place in the world after graduation. Please have the courage to say no to those things that are not inherent to our stu students' foundation. I have recently spent considerable time reviewing some of the district report cards for recent years. 
versus similar districts, at least with regard to demographics. To be honest, the data is really overwhelming. Our world today is all about metrics and data, and schools have done their fair share of introspection and measurement. A few items from the 2020 school report card, however, did catch my attention. We are a very well-funded district. Our rate of over $3,200 of income tax dollars per pupil exceeds greatly the $1,800 in similar districts. That was good news. Our third graders were all promoted in 2020 to fourth grade, but yet only 59% of those students were proficient on the state language arts test. Also in 2020, 71% of our seniors entered college within two years, and that seems like a really good number to me. 94% of our student, students took the ACT, but only 36% had scores that met minimum college entrance requirements, 36%. We can do better. Uh, I would suggest that we no longer compare ourselves to failing districts, 30 seconds. but look to those best performers and learn from their successes. You are about to make a very important decision and select a new school superintendent. We ask that you select an experienced leader, a leader who is an effective communicator, a proven decision maker, and a leader with a clear vision of how we will build a growing district. Choose someone who will use the many assets, good assets that are already in place in this district to steer our staff to produce citizens that can successfully find their way to skilled trades. Thank you. Higher learning. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Frank Hickman. <clears throat> Celebrated veteran. Thank you. I know about celebrated, but thank you. Can you hear me? So I'm now going to no, 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 no. All, right. <laughs> All right. Can you hear me? Yes. yes. All right. I'm Frank Hickman. I'm a graduate of Buckeye Valley, and I live here in the district. I'm here this evening to speak to some opportunities and challenges within our schools. Over the last few months, I've had the opportunity to speak with each of you sitting in front of me that represent the board. You bring a wealth of experience to this position, and uh, I just want you to know that you, and I see that you clearly understand what's important about moving forward. And I know that because I've had the opportunity to spend time and speak with each one of you here. And the importance of your mission, and I am a veteran and I will speak about the mission, is to provide a sound education for each of our students and there is no question in my mind that the assembled board here is perfectly positioned to lead this district forward. And I thank you for that. Each of you now is presented with what may very well be the most important decision that you're going to take during your tenure on the Buckeye Valley Board. That decision is the select selection of our next superintendent that decision will directly affect the future of Buckeye Valley schools, our students, and our community. Our expectation is that you will choose a person that brings experience as a successful superintendent, has a proven history of making their schools better, is a strong communicator who will lead from the front and a person who understands the needs and expectations of our community and Buckeye Valley schools. Now there's been a lot of recent noise about our around our community that is at best a mere distraction from what is important. So as a veteran let me share some military wisdom with you. 
that served me very well as a young combat platoon leader. And it goes like this. It is hard to remember your mission was to drain the swamp 30 seconds. when you're up to your, you know what, in alligators. <laughs> <laughs> so those alligators are merely a minor, albeit noisy, distraction from your good work, from what is truly important. Know that we support each and every one of you, and we will hold those alligators at bay as you move forward with, with what you've been elected to do for Buckeye Valley. Thank you. Thank you. Skip over a read and Liz Sheets. Welcome. Thank you. I'm really emotional, uh, especially hearing things today. So <clears throat> my voice cracked. Um, it's not that I've sung too much. So. <laughs> <laughs> I do want to um, say something to Mr. Thomas, because he may not know it, but his mom was my mentor in softball. <laughs> she was good. <laughs> um, I'm, a, uh, I'm a baron. I will always be a baron. And I've always been very compassionate about the district and the opportunities that I've had over my uh, my personal and professional career and if it wouldn't have been for this school district, um, those kind of things wouldn't have happened. Uh, the staff members, uh, the administration, the board, um, just were phenomenal. I can't say enough about them. Um, and actually, I still keep in contact with them and they look younger than I do now. So. Um, but anyway, um, my concern is um, just sort of the feeling or the atmosphere that I'm not here every day, but in, in reading things, and I try not to just hear things, I try to get the information, but it just seems like the undercurrent is just, uh, is very hurtful uh, from an alumni. Um, who knows that this district uh, is phenomenal and can be. And I think part of it is, is that, um, as some other people said, is that um, um, this world has come to me first. It's not a team effort, and that was one thing that I really learned, learned here, is that through difficulties, through hassles, through problems, it took a team to solve, and we found ways to do that. And I know that there need to come to a, a point where we agree to disagree on some things. Um, and I guess I just can't say enough about what I have been afforded in terms of my high school participation in sport, being part of the best darn band, high school band in Ohio, um, and all the other things that I had here. Um, I was able to go to college on a sports scholarship and was one of the first because of Title IX. I was uh, able to teach. Um, I was able to serve in management as a public relations coordinator. I served on boards. 30 and I seconds. don't want to be on boards anymore, so I, I admire you for the, the, the responsibility that you have. I'm asking that um, we try to stop doing things individually and work together. That's not through email. That's not through uh, Twitter or Facebook or whatever. Um, we've lost sight of looking at someone in the face and saying, I disagree, because we are going to disagree. And it's important for us to have that dialogue. For example, I may have a dialogue with some of you, Sorry. because I happen to be gay, and I'm concerned about the kids here. So I'm just asking for us to take the time to speak person to person, instead of let social media take over. Thank you. Scott here. Um, Tanya Taylor. Um, 
that was a read. Kate Atkins. James Bow. Megan Dennis. Is that there? Are there any more? Two more. Two more. Kyle Toller. Um, Clark. Thank you. Good Hello. to see you. I see you. You're doing good. good. Sorry about the church stress for you guys up here. Um, I think it's stressful for everybody who's in this room, um, whatever side you're on. Um, but I think we're truly on the kids' side. You know, I, I really believe that. How we get there, I wish I had that crystal ball for you. Um, but I do believe that I do the social media is not good for everybody. I think if we're going to try to solve this as parents, somehow we need to get the leaders on the one side and leaders on the other side, and maybe somehow we can come together and try to educate each other. Because I heard last meeting there was something about the pronouns that I really didn't understand. And I was looking at people that I'm like, is this really making sense? I didn't. I mean, I'm an adult sometimes. Um, <laughs> If it's confusing to us, it's confusing to our kids, okay? And that doesn't make them racist, doesn't make them bigots, this just makes them confused, okay? And I, I have three little ones, and I can't even imagine going through what they're going through, and I'm almost 50 years old and I can't even understand it, okay? And I try to just say, hey, you know, I've been through a lot of trainings, I'm a medic, I'm a fireman, I treat the community like they're supposed to be equally. And I've been to trainings, and, and they, we had where they go, okay, what if you can't, what if this person wants to be a perfect guy and it's actually a girl? And how do you handle that? And my answer was treat them like human being. But that wasn't the right answer. That's not what that I was taught. But I can't change my, my view on that because as a medic, I can't call in a patient who's a male who has abdominal pain or a female and didn't say that on the end call to the hospital because there's so many different things that could be different in there. So all I'm saying is that maybe somehow, instead of just being cowboys on keyboards, that we sit down, get together, and talk about this, okay? Right? I'm not, like, I'm proud of who I am. I'm sure everybody's proud of who they are. That's okay. That's America. We're all different. That's what makes us great. Um, but I know it's, it's been tough for my kids, and I know when people say it's a distraction, that they feel like it's an insult to somebody. Like, this is not a distraction. Well, I think it is to a point. Well, that's all we're all here. You know, I look at some little play baseball or softball tonight in practice. But I think this is important because we're talking about the future of our kids. We want them to respect each other all the way through and not push one agenda on top of somebody else's agenda. 30 seconds. Okay. So, you know, all I can say is we got to get this together. We can't, we're, we can't, we're going to leave it to them here. Somebody's going to get soft insurance. I guarantee it. Okay, I'm not saying they're bad people, but they're going to make a decision. It's not probably going to be what we want it to be possibly as a, as a community. So I don't know what they're going to do, but I know whatever they do, it's probably going to make somebody mad. But again, we got to agree to disagree, and maybe we can make a good bill together. That's what democracy is about, is to work together to get this figured out. Okay? So maybe after this meeting, somehow we can do this together. I'll, I mean, I'll be there if you guys need me. Um, Thank you. I can't. Could you say your first name? I couldn't read it. Shalico. I'm sorry. Shalico. Shalico. Thank you. Thank you all for speaking. I think. Uh, we have a decision to make. Um, just so you know, um, the superintendent process from here, um, it's on our website, the schedule. Um, tonight we'll make selections about who we'll interview. Next week we'll interview and select finalists. And in early May, um, the finalists will come present to us and we'll make a decision within May. So just so you know, um, I that's the information I can share tonight. And I need to get back in to you to see what's next. Executive session.
We're going to convene into executive session. We will reconvene and take no motion, no action after that. Um, thank you very much for coming. Amy, yes. Amy, I, I recognized a friend when I walked in here this evening who made an old BB grad feel welcome when he came back. I'd like to recognize Superintendent Andy Miller. Uh, Session. Motion. I move the Buckeye Valley Board of Education convene to executive session for the consideration of employment employment. I got it. I got it. I got it. Um, Nikki? Yes. It's just the first one. There's nothing here. It should be A.